Hello and welcome to Thought Provoking Tech. I'm Zach and in today's video, I'm going to be answering the question if a fiber internet connection can actually decrease your latency for gaming. I do a lot of videos on cloud gaming and latency is very important for cloud gaming as well as traditional gaming using a PC, Xbox One or a PlayStation 4 or something along those lines. So with that being said, cloud gaming is kind of a unique beast because it also has the aspects of gaming where your latency, your, the latency of your connection is very important, but it also has the aspects of watching video and streaming video through services like YouTube, uh, Netflix, Hulu, so on and so forth, where your download bandwidth is actually a big important role too. So for cloud gaming, you not only have to worry about your download bandwidth, which most providers will advertise, but you also have to worry about your latency, which is the deciding factor for traditional gaming. So having both kind of factors into play makes cloud gaming a unique setup. And today's video is going to focus on the different internet connections from a 4G connection to a cable connection to a fiber connection to see kind of how those different connection types actually impact your latency to different servers. So guys, without further delay, let's go ahead and jump right to it. So before we dive into the results, I do want to give a quick shout out to Travin Grant, who actually inspired this video through one of his comments on a previous video. So just wanted to give you a quick shout out, Travin. Uh, hopefully this data comes to you. Hopefully you see this video. Hopefully you did subscribe to that video so you see it. Uh, let's go ahead and dive into the results. So before we show the graph, I do want to talk about how I got this data. I tested on multiple different internet providers. It was for cable. Uh, it was Comcast for the cable business. It was Comcast business. Uh, for fiber, it was Google Fiber, and for the 4G wireless, it was Verizon Wireless, and my screen's going dark with all my data. Uh, so with that in mind, I tested with those four different carriers, and for each testing zone, so the 50 mile, the 500 mile, and the 1000 mile, I tested two different servers in that kind of radius, and I did three tests for each of those servers, so a total of six tests for each zone. So the 50 mile zone had six tests for Comcast, success for Comcast Business, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you can kind of get the picture from there. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and showcase the graph, which has some very interesting data. All right, so I'm just gonna dive into the most clearing aspect of this graph. And that is the fact that a fiber internet connection will have a massive advantage, but only if the data center is very close to you in terms of physical, physical proximity. Uh, once you get to the, like, the 500 mile range, the results start to average a little bit more. Fiber does still have an advantage, but it's not nearly as much as the average if you're locating or connecting to a server that's in the same town as you or, you know, in the next biggest town that's, you know, maybe 15, 20 miles away from you. So some very interesting results there. Another interesting thing I got from this graph is the fact that 4G wireless actually averaged better slightly, uh, probably within the margin of error when connecting to a server that's 500 miles away then versus a server that is only 50 miles away. So Verizon must be doing some weird things in how they route their internet uh, that causes this inherent latency even when connecting to a very local server, uh, which is kind of um, a downside because if you were using cloud gaming, for example, on Android or iOS to connect to your computer to using like Parsec to connect to your home computer, you could have a good experience if you uh, didn't have that huge added latency right off the bat. Um, so maybe 5G will take care of this. That's the only time to tell. I'll definitely will probably have to revisit this video when 5G comes out, see how things have changed, maybe cable and uh, the backend networks might improve too. Uh, we really don't know at this point in time. Uh, time will only tell. So the biggest things that I got to take away from here is that fiber does have an advantage and that advantage does persist all the way to about the 500 mile radius. Uh, cable is pretty consistent though. It doesn't add a lot of latency uh, even as the distance grows. So that's pretty interesting. Maybe Comcast is paying for a little bit higher end on the back end. Uh, that's kind of connecting the different regions of the United States uh, to these different you know, major data center points. Uh, you know, kind of there's different points in the U.S. that kind of are hubs for the internet infrastructure. If you ever look at a map, uh, maybe I'll fill that up real quick, that kind of shows the internet, you know, infrastructure of the U.S., it does have, kind of have these different hub points. And maybe Comcast is paying for something a little bit better on that back end uh, to kind of compensate for the fact that it is running on a cable connection uh, because you don't seem to really add a lot of latency once you get, you know, to the different, even though they're huge physical distances, they're only adding around five milliseconds between the different steps of, you know, from 50 to 500 and then 500 to 1,000. So very interesting. And the Comcast business does seem to have more added latency, 
But those really focus on the stability of the connection so that the connection is never supposed to go down or it's supposed to be up 99.9% .9 or whatever the service SLA agreement, you know, uh, kind of justifies or is written in there. Uh, so with that in mind, you can definitely see that the business does focus on uptime versus having the best possible connection. I don't really know why those aren't kind of more consistent with each other because it's, they should logically follow the same routing routes, but maybe they do things a little bit different just to guarantee that more, uh, that better uptime. So with all that being said, some very interesting results here. Uh, if you do have a fiber internet connection, try to find a server as close as possible to you for gaming. If you guys are interested in me further testing these results, uh, leave those ideas in the comments below what you would like to see. I also thought about testing the connection speeds. Of course, that's going to be a completely different ball game there. Fiber is going to have the highest connection speeds on average. So just keep all that in mind. But if you have different ideas to get better results or anything along those lines, do leave those in the comments below or just any ideas for future videos. So guys, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big like. I greatly appreciate your guys' support. And until next time, Zach out.